Hi, I'm Patrick Cooch. I'm the I.O. Virtualization Team Lead for Intel's LAN Access Division. Today I'm going to present a two-part presentation on Ethernet technologies that Intel has developed specifically to run in a virtualized environment. I'm going to be discussing those uh, technologies in some detail so you can understand how they actually work and how they provide the benefit to you in your virtualized environment. This section, part one, is going to discuss v Intel VMDQ technology, which stands for Virtual Machine Device Queues. And the second part of this presentation will discuss the uh, PCI SIG SRIOV, stands for Single Root IO Virtualization Implementation that Intel has done in some of its Ethernet controllers. This is what Ethernet IO looks like in a traditional virtualized environment where the device driver for the NIC is owned and resides in the virtual machine manager, the VMM. A packet comes in to the NIC, it's DMA to the memory space in the VMM. The uh, VMM takes that packet and sends it to a software switch. That switch then sorts the packets and copies it to the memory of the VM based upon a sorting algorithm such as a destination MAC address or VLAN tag. Let's take a look at what this might look like. So this slide represents a virtualized environment where you have eight cores that are uh, all running uh, and uh, controlling eight virtual machines. So what happens when an Ethernet packet comes in is that the NIC or the LOM is going to fire off an interrupt and then that interrupt will be serviced by a core. So that core previously was was handling uh, the operations of a virtual machine. So it has to be interrupted, it has to go uh, service the incoming packet. Then it has to examine that packet, it has to sort it, determine again uh, based upon a VLAN tag or a destination MAC address. And so what it does, it determines which virtual machine that packet is destined for. Then it uh, fires an interrupt. It, it goes and interrupts the core that is currently owning that virtual machine. So that virtual machine has to stop processing. It comes over and it gets the packet. And then it takes it and it copies it to the virtual machine and resumes processing. Then the first core that was interrupted. So let's go through this process again. Packet comes in and interrupt is fired. A core is interrupted. That core examines the packet, determines which virtual machine that packet is destined for based upon a MAC or VLAN tag, and then it interrupts the core that runs that virtual machine. Then that core gets the packet, takes it and injects it into the memory of the virtual machine that it's destined for. Then it resumes processing, and then the original core that was interrupted also then resumes processing. So, what's the problem with this mechanism? The problem is, is that you have this one core that just can be easily overloaded, especially with 10 gigabit uh, Ethernet connection, because it's interrupted for every packet that comes in. So it has to stop processing the the uh, the virtual machine that's working on go service the interrupt go look at the packet figure out which virtual machine is destined for and then it goes and interrupts the core that owns that virtual machine so it can then get the packet and copy it into the memory space of the guest OS of the virtual machine and then resume processing and then the original core that was interrupted to service the Ethernet packet coming in can then go off and resume its activities So all this overhead has the effect of not being able to process the data as fast as it's coming in because you have these two interrupts being being called for every packet that comes in. And you have one core that's that's actually in charge of handling every packet that comes before it determines which other core to interrupt for it to actually copy the data to the target VM. So this results in the fact that in a 10 gigabit environment you cannot keep up with 10 gigabits worth of data. You can only get 3.5 to 4 gigabits of data depending on your processors and your the architecture of your system. 
So Intel developed Intel VMDQ technology, which um, speeds up the process of, of sorting these incoming packets. So now a packet comes in and it's sorted into these different queues based upon a MAC or VLAN tag that are configured by the VMM, uh, configuring our layer 2 sorter and classifier. And then it, uh, it, offloads so the, it offloads the sorting so the hypervisor doesn't have to do that. So that's a big benefit for the hypervisor to help speed things up. So one of the real big benefits of VMDQ is that now it has a different interrupt for every queue. So now a packet comes in, gets sorted into a different queue, and an interrupt is assigned to each individual queue, and the hypervisor can assign a different core to each interrupt. This allows a more parallel type processing where you can have multiple cores all operating at the same time processing and receiving the data and only one core is interrupted per incoming packet. So you have a packet that comes in destined for a specific virtual machine. It gets sorted into a specific queue because the hypervisors configured all that and there's a specific interrupt for each queue and the virtual machine that uh, is assigned to that queue is running uh, on a specific core that's running on that's assigned to that interrupt. So now a packet comes in, put it into a queue, and a core is interrupted, and it goes grabs that packet, services it, and resumes operation. It doesn't have to interrupt another queue or another core because it's the it's the one that's already operating and controlling the virtual machine where that packet is destined for. So now you have much more efficient usage of of your system because you can spread that incoming workload amongst multiple cores, not just one core that has to service every interrupt that comes in. So a high level overview of what VM, Intel VMDQ technology does for you is that there is a layer 2 sorter slash classifier within the Intel Ethernet controllers that the hypervisor can configure and based upon that we will put the packets in the incoming packets into individual queues based upon the MAC or VLAN tag filter that's configurable. Each queue has its own interrupt and this is where the real benefit of VMDQ is. is each queue has its own interrupt and each interrupt assigned to it can be assigned to a different core and then that means that every packet that comes in is sorted into these different queues and the workload can be spread across multiple cores to service those interrupts and service those incoming packets rather than in the traditional model one core is assigned to the incoming um, traffic and uh, can be overloaded easily because it has to do all these multiple interrupts for every packet that comes in to service different virtual machines on different cores. Well now you have your virtual machine assigned to a core and that core is assigned to an interrupt that's assigned to a queue and so a packet comes in and gets put into a queue, an interrupt is fired, the core goes and grabs that packet, copies it to the virtual machine, and keeps running. That's where the huge benefit of VMDQ is, is it spreads your Ethernet workload across multiple cores. So this is our Intel's Ethernet controller support at a glance for a virtualized environment. And this presentation is focusing on VMDQ on the left side. So we currently have three Ethernet controllers that are available for one gigabit, our Intel one gigabit controllers. And on the 10 gigabit space, we have two Ethernet controllers that are available. These are all uh, available today and, uh, and supported by uh, the major VMMs. Here is a short list of available resources in case you want to get some more information that uh, I suggest you pause this page and take a look at it. But essentially, we have data sheets. It tells you all the nuts and bolts of, the, of the, each controller. You want to read more about VMDQ. There's lots of white papers out there. You want to look at source code. You have VMDQ source code that you can download from VMware's website. Uh, I have another YouTube video that, that has a VMDQ in action that actually shows you going from 3.5 gigabits up to 9.2. And uh, some other resources here for SRIOV, in case you're interested. And with that, that ends my presentation, and I hope you found it useful.